Hello, I'm Dr. Indra Daniels, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Cape Mental Health in Cape Town, South Africa. Cape Mental Health is the oldest and largest community-based mental health organization providing mental health services in very dire and challenging communities. I'm also the immediate past president of the World Federation for Mental Health, and I've been asked to speak to you today about mental health and human rights in an African context. But before I begin, the World Federation for Mental Health has a milestone anniversary, the 75th anniversary of the World Federation for Mental Health will be celebrated this year. And this global campaign has been launched, which will put the spotlight specifically on World Mental Health Day 2023. With its theme, mental health is a universal human right. So let's turn our gaze to Africa. Africa is the second largest continent and the second most populated in the world with 54 countries. Most countries are characterized by low income, high prevalence of communicable diseases, malnutrition, low life expectancy, and poorly staffed services, specifically in the mental health context, while wars rage on and are fought in certain regions on the continent. Collier and Gunning in 1999 stated that despite its vast natural resources, Africa remains one of the least developed and economically underprivileged continents. Across the African region, more than 116 million people were already estimated to be living with the mental health condition pre the COVID-19 pandemic. Suicide rates remain particularly concerning as are the exponential rates of alcohol use and abuse amongst adolescents as young as 13 years old, according to the World Health Organization Regional Director for Africa, Dr. Machido Shidoso Muti in 2022. Depression on the continent is the most prevalent mental illness in the world. Currently, an estimated 100 million people in Africa suffer from clinical depression, including 66 million women. The World Bank considers it the greatest thief of productive economic life, with yearly global costs from mental neurological and substance use disorders estimated at between 2.5 and 8.5 trillion US dollars a year. That figure is projected to nearly double by the year 2030. Ethan et al. in 2019 states, that on average, 90% of people with mental illnesses have no access to treatment, especially in poor countries and rural areas in Africa. In Sierra Leone, the treatment gap for mental health services has been estimated to be as high as 98.8%. That is almost the entire population of persons living with a mental health condition. The World Economic Forum presents this very insightful infographic, stating that 66 million women in sub-Saharan Africa who suffer from depression have very little access to mental health care. They stated that up to 85% of this population have absolutely no access to effective treatments. 
In Uganda and Zambia, we see how women's impaired ability to function in day-to-day -day life creates profound hardship. When a woman is unable to perform her essential social responsibilities, she can become a target of criticism and exclusion. An African woman with depression compared to her healthy peers suffer greatly. She is less productive, has a lower income, and has poorer physical health, according to the World Economic Forum in 2021. The World Health Organization in 2022 stated that mental health care for people living in sub-Saharan Africa is in ineffective, inefficient, inadequate, and inequitable due to high treatment costs. Most young people in sub-Saharan Africa are left with no choice but to live with untreated mental disorders or to visit traditional or religious leaders for treatment simply because Western treatments are not available. The demand for mental health services is increasing in Africa, particularly among vulnerable populations like women. Most African governments devote less than 1% of their budgets to mental health services, according to the World Economic Forum. The lack of access to mental health care infringes significantly on the human rights of all persons with a lived experience. People with mental health conditions around the world are exposed to a wide range of human rights violations. The stigma they face means they are often ostracized from society and fail to receive the care they require or the services and support they need to live full lives in their communities and families. In some communities, people with mental health conditions are banished to the edge of town where they are left semi-naked or in rags, tied up, beaten, and left to go hungry, according to the World Health Organization in 2015. A national study done in 2016 on human rights violations found that human rights violations are frequently experienced by people with mental illness. Mental health professionals agreed and strongly dis uh, and agreed that this was in fact the case. Mental health professionals up to 59.6% indicated that people with mental illness are more likely to be abused by health professionals as well. They further added that rundown buildings at psychiatric facilities violate the rights of patients to proper care. And this was really interesting because it was the majority of these health professionals who, who agreed and strongly disagreed. They further added that access to medication is a human right. And so often, stockouts of medication have made it incredibly difficult for mental health care users to regularize their adherence to medication. When interviewing persons with lived experience in a focus group, these were some of the comments they made. So we sit with these issues. We sit with the stigma that the community is giving us and judging us and saying, there goes that man. A lot needs to be done to change the attitude. As long as there is stigma, we as mental health patients get judged by our community, by our families and people around you. And if this continues, they noted nothing will change. Another mental health user said, they use your condition against you. You are not treated as normal or as a normal person. And so the African Human Rights Yearbook in 2018 stated that persons with mental health issues are often seen as not being capable of making decisions 
and are sometimes institutionalized without their consent. They are frequently forced to take medication and at times they are treated inhumanely, often being chained to soil beds for long periods of time, subjected to violence and torture. The administration of treatment without informed consent, unmodified use of electroconvulsive therapy, grossly inadequate sanitation and inadequate nutrition. Persons with mental disability are prone to systematic abuse, especially in institutions, since there is no monitoring and accountability structures. The African Human Rights Yearbook further states that the right to mental health is guaranteed in different instruments in the African system. Article 16 of the African Charter states that every individual shall have the right to enjoy the best attainable state of physical and mental health. And state parties to and our state parties to the present charter shall take responsibility for the necessary measures to protect health of their people and ensure that they receive medical attention when they are sick. So there are instruments. There are instruments to guarantee the rights of persons with a mental health condition. However, Multiple human rights abuses against those with mental health conditions are still perpetrated daily. There are many, many stories told and untold. The effect of mental health being a low priority on the continent has led to most countries having no health policy or mental health legislation to regulate care and safeguard the human rights of persons with a lived experience. Fadi et al. in 2011 stated at that time that approximately half of the countries in the African region had a mental health policy by 2005. But little is known about the quality of these mental health policies. We accept that this is a huge problem and we understand that much more needs to be done. But for as long as mental health remains a low priority, very few countries will invest, very few countries will ensure that there are policies and legislation in place to protect those with a lived experience of a mental health condition. And so the World Health Organization in 2022 states that limited mental health education and awareness and shame and stigma are also barriers. Name calling, ridicule and chastisement are types of things that people with mental illnesses are met with in the community. And they stated, that stigma devalues and disfavors people with mental health conditions and often prevent them from accessing treatment. This is a huge concern as it occurs daily within communities, making people with mental health conditions feel lesser as a person. And yet we know that they have major contributions to make to their families, to the communities they live in and, if, and the country. And so the World Health Organization's Quality Rights and the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability provides clear guidance to address these injustices often experienced by persons with a lived experience of a mental health condition. An important goal of the World Health Organization's Quality Rights Initiative is to provide practical solutions to promote human rights throughout countries, mental health and social care systems, and in particular, to support countries of whom the vast majority have ratified 
the UNCRPD to actualize the rights of this convention. Historical inequalities in mental health have deprived many people with lived experience of a mental illness from living fully integrated and dignified lives in the African region and globally. This is not just an African issue. This is a global issue. And so, despite, despite all the challenges on the continent, there is hope. And this hope has come about by the fact that mental health advocates, persons with lived experiences, mental health professionals, researchers, NGOs, and many others continue to advocate for increased investment and resources. They continue to advocate that mental health becomes a priority on the continent. And they are cost-effective and evidence-based and innovative in interventions, such as task shifting and sharing for scalability, the friendship bench in Zimbabwe, community-based PSR programs and their interventions specifically run by my organization at Cape Mental Health, peer-led initiatives and integration of mental health into multi-sectoral programs seen in Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, Ghana, Niger, Nigeria, Mali, and ongoing training have also been implemented. Furthermore, a framework to strengthen the implementation of, of the Comprehensive Mental Health Action Plan in the World Health Organization African region will go a long way to provide more access to care. There is excellent research. And the recommendations and findings, the findings and recommendations of those research programs need to be implemented. In the end, political will and commitment is required by African leaders to bring about fundamental change and ensure that every citizen on the continent has access to care. That is the goal, and we hope that that would be achieved. It was Martin Luther King Jr. who said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. This young man, Shabani from Tanzania said, for every young person in Africa, there is a voice inside him or her that has the potential to change the world. We want these voices to be heard so that change can happen on the continent of Africa. And as Vikram Patel said, there is no health without mental health. Mental health is too important to be left to professionals alone. And mental health is everyone's business. We need a multidisciplinary, multi-sectoral approach to address the problems across all sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you.